Good evening. We had a chance um, to collaborate with each other, with Ryochi, uh, on some videos and also my feature film, Women Without Men. Um, but let's go back to you. Uh, I Let me introduce <laughs> yes. this, uh, this beautiful lady. Uh, uh, this is Aiko Masabuchi, uh, who uh, works at the Japan Society as a um, uh, senior program, programmer uh, in the film department. And my English is not good enough to talk about the deep subjects, like a philosophical subjects. So sometimes you know, I, I have to ask her to um, interpret. Sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> Let's start with the film. Uh, and the director is in the audience. Um, really huge congratulations. Um, and I've seen this film now twice in one week, and I feel so moved um, because I think this film has done a great justice to, um, you know, reveal the spirit of who you are as an artist, your philosophy, your process, and your challenges and victory, both in art and film, in the way that I really think it's difficult, difficult to reveal about artists um, deeply. So I'm so inspired, like many people are, and they have many questions. Um, but I wanted to go back to you the first time I heard your music. And um, I didn't really know who you are. And um, I listened to your music repeatedly, and this goes back many years ago. That was before we met? Yes, oh. uh, before uh, we started working together. And what I want to talk about is my reaction to your music was this incredibly strong emotional, almost spiritual force that it was unexplainable for me. And to this day, I have the same experience with your music, whether you're playing piano solo, or in an album in collaboration with other people, or in a symphony orchestra for films. And it makes me think about people like Andre Tarkovsky that you're also very obsessed about. When I see his films, I have this uncontrollable emotional reaction. Mm -hmm. and, and I think a lot of people have to poets, mm -hmm. to mystics, mm -hmm. um, like people regarding Rumi or Hafez. And I want to go back first and most for you to speak about where emotion comes into your work. Because I know with my work, it comes in the image. And uh -huh. so how can you speak about the way that you negotiate and, and really express emotions in different ranges in such diverse type of work? Can you speak about that? <coughs> well, uh, I don't know why, but uh, at s from the some point, you know, I, I have been caught by this melancholy. <laughs> um, or um, kind of a s feeling sadness uh, about um, about human beings, and also the uh, about the struggle between nature and human beings. Maybe s long time or like um, um, even when I was a teen, um, probably by listening, um, this was influenced by listening to the music of Bach a lot, because um, Bach, the music of Bach was the very first music I um, became to like it, to like. Um, <clears throat> when, I was, when I was in the second grade, um, I started uh, taking piano lessons from the first grade, then started, well, I was forced to play the Bach, Bach's inventions uh, <clears throat> after, uh, from the second grade. Um, I really loved it. The one reason was um, I'm left-handed. Um, normally, um, music has a beautiful melody on the right hand, and left hand is just backing up. Um, I, I felt, well, as a seven or eight year boy, <laughs> left-handed boy, I felt really unfair <laughs> about that. 
and then you know, encountered the musical Bach, and I was so glad to find out this music because uh, it's written very fairly, like uh, <laughs> the theme is presented by the right hand and next next bar, next me me next measure, you know, the left hand repeats the same theme. And you know, it goes on, right to left, right to left. It's not just uh, left hand or one hand is backing up to the melody. So I think it's so good. <laughs> I really loved it. And uh, so um, I kept listening to Bach. And every time like a very tragic event happened, like 9-11 or 3-11 in Japan, <coughs> the big tsunami happened. After that, um, there were always the periods I couldn't listen to music or I couldn't think about music. Like uh, some weeks you know, or sometimes a month. Then always the first music I started listening again was uh, Bach's, Bach's Matthew's Passion. I mean, it's corny maybe. <laughs> I don't know, uh, stereotypical maybe. <laughs> Because um, you know everyone, everyone can say that, but uh, that was the really the music. You know, I start listening again. That is that the answer? Absolutely. <laughs> I, and I think you you put uh, your finger on my next uh, question, which is that element of tension or contradiction in your work. You talked about your work is always deeply melancholic, like Tarkovsky was but also illuminating and beautiful. And I want to bring up your new album, which I love so much, Async Remodels, is that, did I pronounce it right? And I, I think that talking about emotions, I think for me, this is your most personal and emotional uh, album in the way that perhaps reflects some personal experience that you've had uh, recently. Um, and that is, the question of suffering yet re recovery um, and victory over death, as you spoke about so beautifully in, in this film. But also, musically speaking, it is this um, convergence of organic and synthetic silence and sound, life and death. I wrote notes to myself that it's at once, I don't know if many of you have heard this album, it's incredibly, it's his last album. It's Music is very melancholic, but extremely joyful. Um, it's about pain, but relief. It's about wound, but healing. And it's almost like a form of mourning, but also celebration of life. And I think this type of contradiction, it's what embodies your work and your philosophy in a way that you really, you're a political activist, you're an environmentalist, um, but you're a poet, you're a mystic, and I think this, film is a testimony of that, by the way you speak, by the way your process works, by the way you relate to nature, by political crisis. And I think in this album, as if your personal life experiences and music in the way you go back and forth between the organic and mm -hmm. synthetic all sort of melted together. Do you agree? And what was your experience in this album different than your previous uh, no. albums? Yeah, um, but definitely uh, um, being di diagnosed cancer was a um, huge event on me, and uh, at that point I was uh, I was the moment of um, being clo closest to to death. Uh, of course, it uh, happened once in my life so far. <laughs> um, <laughs> And um, of course, you know, I, 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 I have to think about life and death uh, so much. Um, the interesting really, uh, the, some moments, the time, the period, uh, the treatment was so harsh. <laughs> I couldn't listen to music or I couldn't enjoy music at all. So what I did was watching the DVDs <laughs> instead. Um, 
Okay, so that's not essential. Essential. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so, um, how should I uh, describe? Um, what's the? Well, I I felt I was reborn, definitely after after you know, I was recovered. Um, when I felt that, I had to work on the revenant. So I, uh, I really felt I'm 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 a revenant too. <laughs> and so that was very big moment for me too. Like a meeting, or working with Inaritu was a huge impact on me. So I before before. Before the sickness, you know, I had uh, lots of uh, sketches and memos and ideas, but I, I trashed everything. I dumped everything. And uh, I really wanted to start over from, from scratch. Then, so I'm, <laughs> I'm ready to start making completely new music. And I, I was sitting, and I didn't know what to do. Um, like a <laughs> I was listening a sound, uh, the sound of nature, like a rain, rain or wind, or you know, hitting some singing bowls. So many, I, I did randomly so many things, and still I didn't know what to do. Um, I really wanted to make the music I wanted to listen to. Um, but the, I don't know the answer. So I was searching, looking for four months, uh, trying many, many things. Like I went to the forest, you know, uh, recording the, the sound of the forest, so birds and uh, raindrops and uh, the lake, etc. But it's just the one, one of the trials. And <coughs> So um, it's like um, searching the meaning of my own life again, or maybe not again, first time. After the, after, after the points to closest to death. I think it's incredible that you were immediately asked to do this film, Revenants. And I have to say that's the favorite part of the film for me. <laughs> 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 um, but I wanted to say that you think about, everyone thinks about the longevity of your career and how relevant you have been. And you know, I think part of the, the success of your career is the way that, first of all, you work multiple different forms in music and you continue to reinvent yourself. Um, you are always a new beginner. It's, it's something that I really admire about artists that don't tend to repeat themselves. I'd like to ask you, to speak a little bit about working on film as opposed to non-film, and the question of sound that goes with an image as opposed to sound that goes without image. Uh, you know, what is that like, uh, to have that structure, that narrative, working with someone who has a particular style? Um, I know it's not easy, and you've worked with me, and you have mentioned, uh, but what is that experience like, both artistically, professionally, but also, in terms of just um, conceptually, how do you develop music that is attached to music and not? Well, um, of course, you know, uh, since um, I started working on uh, film, film music uh, almost 35 years ago or something like that, um, I, the, my idea or thought about the film music has been changed a lot. Um, in the be very beginning, um, the music of Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence was my very first movie music. And the very first movie I acted in. <coughs> so I didn't know how to, how to make film music. Uh, of course, you know, uh, since I was a very little kid, uh, I, uh, I've been liking film music a lot, like uh, Nino Rota. Well, 
very first film music I remember, probably I was four or five years old, I was on the, my mother's laps and I heard the music of Nino Rota, uh, the, the theme of um, um, La Strada. And I really loved it. And sometimes you know, after that, I heard the same music from the radio. And I, went, I was like a jumping, wow, that's, that's the music. Well, anyway. <laughs> uh, but that's the well, very little knowledge I had um, when I started. So, and I, I was in that movie, Merry Christmas, Mr. Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence. So I put my music on my bad acting scenes. <laughs> oh, oh, here. I hear, I hear, because I, I really hated my bad acting on, in that movie. Super handsome. <laughs> so, so, you know, I decided to compensate the, my bad acting with my music. So, you know. Anyway, um, so in the beginning, you know, uh, when I was young, you know, um, I really didn't care so much about the film, film quality or the relationship of the music and the images. Um, I just wanted to make good music, uh, my own music, and uh, I want my music stands out. <laughs> and that's, I, right now I think, well from point of the present, um, it's bad music, bad film music, you know. Uh, the music shouldn't stand out from the movie. That's my faith right now. So, uh, and also, sometimes I'm annoyed by listening, listening to a very strong melody from the movie. Um, Probably maybe because I'm a professional musician, so I, I catch a melody uh, immediately and it dominates my images about the film or the story or anything. So sometimes, yeah, strong melodies um, are annoyed, uh, annoying for me. So I recent what well, my recent works you know, I try not to put not so strong melodies or musicality. I mean more more like um I want to I want to blend my music with other sounds like uh, uh, sound effects and dialogues and images. More like a <coughs> um synthesize with sounds and music and images together. That's my ideal. But the, what, what's your ideal well, concept I, between images and music? Because I could say mm -hmm. from my small experience um, as a filmmaker, I worked with you, I worked with Philip Glass, and uh, I've had uh, some experiences recently, but I think for me, in films um, and music, uh, it's very tricky, um, and yet it's so effective in, in my work because it's usually very socio-politically grounded. I think the music helps to neutralize some of those ethnically specific cultural elements and make it much more universal and about the humanity, and it sort of makes the film more emotional. That's my approach to music. Um, now, enough about me. I want to go back to you. No, no, I know he's no, very no, tricky. I, he no, was please, like, no, I have one. You all. Oh my God, I have one question. <laughs> These people are here for you, but I have a no, very no, no. important question that comes from the film. The central part of the film, it, <laughs> it, it really, um, I think it's very fascinating, as you all agree, that you're constantly collecting sounds in nature and then constantly in your studio behind technology, computer, and all this. And, and it's um, clearly, um, you know, in your music, you, you can hear the sound of the water and this and that, and yet 
this synthetic, um, uh, you know, techno sounds. And I want you to talk about, um, you know, uh, how you balance uh, such opposite natures. And, and, and this really thinks me, it makes me think a lot about your interest in the environment and then the destruction of the environment and how technology, how you speak about it. Uh, Langsley, can you speak a little bit about, again, this other paradox? <coughs> Um, to get the balance means uh, between the sound of nature and the organic, organic and yeah. more artificial yeah. or electrical. <coughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't have the answer. Um, I'm always looking for a good balance, but uh, I don't know how to get it. Uh, just I always decide um, by my, my own sense. Uh, but the sense, sense is so fragile. I mean, uh, it, you know, maybe the same sense, but, but all, let's say audio, but the sense will be different, slightly different tomorrow, or day after tomorrow, or one, one hour later. Always very yeah, unstable. But um, we have to, I have to trust my own sense. Otherwise, um, I don't want to decide anything um, intellectually. Like, um, of course, you know, we have, we have uh, so many theories of um, forms in music. So I can, I can use those. And maybe I can get a good balance or good composition, but I don't want to use them. Uh, anymore. And how much of your music, I, I am sure I'm going to run out of time and bring the questions to the audience, I have my last two questions, is how much of your music is improvisational when you record uh, as opposed to being fully controlled and structured? I'm, I'm very curious. Um, I Recently I tried to start making my music from improvising. Well, improvising is like a very simple thing, just um, hitting or you know, any, anything, just maybe by chance or an error could trigger uh, the very new inspiration or new idea. So, yeah, so um, you, have, you have to be very careful all the time, you know, you have to open your ears all the time, because um, anything can happen uh, unexpectedly. <coughs> like, uh, just for instance, just accidentally hit something, and you can hear a very new sound to me, and wow, you have to be surprised, you have to be, you know, fresh about that. Uh, anything can be music. Um, <clears throat> often um, I go abroad, um, wherever, Africa or Spain or France, Japan maybe. <clears throat> the, each city has a different um, sounds of ambulance. Um, I really love, love it and I try to record it immediately but uh, you know, it's so fast, and it's gone. <laughs> but I really love it. And so many different sounds. Well, even where the big cities like New York, Tokyo, or Paris, but the, each city has a different sound. Uh, it's, it's full of sounds. And like I, right in the middle of the uh, center of Paris, I heard the sound of water. So I recorded it. It's so beautiful. Always unpredictable. Yeah. I have a question for you. So, <laughs> because you must have you must have had a, a difficulty uh, about my music for your music uh, film Women Without Men. No. I love the music. Oh, oh come on. No, we, we <laughs> no, I I I I, I explain. When we started at Ryochi uh, with Women Without Men, the film was called uh, Women Without Men, but it's really a story of a few women that left the society to take refuge in an orchard. 
and there in this um, surreal, actually it's a magic realism novel, um, they, they escaped the society and they started life over again. And they were separated from the civilization and while Tehran in the capital of Iran was going through a revolution. And so for me at some point after we shot the movie, previously I thought differently about music. But once we made the film, I realized that because there was so much realism in the country uh, of Iran in that period, but once we arrived in the orchard was when everything became timeless, universal, and purely on existential issues. And I felt that the music had to resonate that quality of bring, you know, even the silence. Did it? It did, absolutely. And actually the music also came to the city, but the only the surrealist, the sur um, surreal moments. Well, so what I'm saying, I think for me, I, I didn't think of the music as conceptually as I had before. What Yoshi is pointing at is we, we were very selective about where we put the music. But I really feel that it helps to, to emphasize what I was trying to do, which became the soul of this woman and, this, and the, the kind of the, the orchard being this un, unworldly mm -hmm. place. And it was beautiful. <laughs> I, I thought you, know, uh, you would need more conceptual music, so I was trying to do that. Then you asked me to make more emotional music, so I, in the middle of the process, you know, I had to switch my brain. <laughs> the music is very emotional and very, I, anyway, I... But, but the one, one more thing, <laughs> just a little bit, little thing. Um, it's the conversation a, we haven't had for... We had a very good recording for her film uh, with uh, some musicians, you know, um, then she declined the the beautifully recorded track that instead you know, she used my cheap synth demo <laughs> for, 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 for a beautiful paradise scene. Why? Why? <laughs> we wasted the money. <laughs> I have a confession to make. Um, my ears get uh, used to something and I fall absolutely in love. <laughs> And, and um, it's, it's such a difficult role to be that person, um, you know, and that. <laughs> but anyway, I, um, to this day, you know, and I, I want to say something. One of the reasons I was drawn to your work, watching Little Buddha, Sh The Sheltering Sky, The Last Emperor, is that although those work were about China or India or Morocco, and, and very much, um, you heard the melodies of those cultures. There was something about Sakamoto in there. That was the soul of the music and that it allowed the work not to remain only local. And, and, and that's what I thought to work with him and that's what it happened. And I, I think that film refuses to be just an Iranian film. It, because of your help and because of your incredible music, um, I could have tried as much as I could but I'm still Iranian, you know? But working with you in the way that you allowed me to bring Persian music, but yet your own signature work added that level of emotionality, spirituality, if I could use that word, that helped the film elevate to a place that I only wish it had. And I really mean it. Um, uh -huh. And I think all of the work that you do in film, uh, you have that force. I don't mean to just compliment you, and, and this is why um, I, I really believe that in Revenant, when the film opened and, and the throughout, uh, the moments that I believed in that film was when your film came, uh, your music you. came, um, because it, it really just sort of punctuated the pain. And uh, anyway, so. Thank you um, so much. Uh, now I remember not the, 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 the track, uh, and she declined. The, the, my synth harmony with the, the Persian track. Yes, that, that's what it is, you know, uh, now I remember. Uh, so we, we recorded the synth parts uh, with the real musicians, but uh, she didn't like it. <laughs> uh, that's okay. You know. <laughs> My last question. 
What is next? What's the next chapter? Can you speak about it? I'm sure you had a lot in your mind. Mm. Um, if you know my past albums, you know, um, I have been jumping one place to another, you know, all the time. So one, like uh, for instance, in the early 90s, I made a one album heavily influenced by the music of house. The next one is heavily influenced by hip hop. <laughs> then next one is a piano trio. <laughs> and next one is a symphonic. So it was jumping like that very, I'm very schizophrenic. <laughs> But this time, because uh, the meaning of album async is so important to me, so I don't want to, you know, uh, let it go. Then this meaning, this album, and I want to, I want to, like, uh, look after, take care, or grow the async to another step or whatever dimension or whatever so i don't i don't want to yeah i i really would like to develop from async to something next and i'm thinking i'm planning to make a little bit of theatrical piece like, uh, with performers and um, lighting and images of course, sound, music, maybe water, or land, <laughs> wind, or fog. Um, well, we are calling just um, temporarily, we, we're calling an opera, but um, of course it's not an opera. Uh, no, no aria or no regular choir, no no, not like a Puccini's opera. Uh, yeah, don't mis misunderstand. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm still uh, we're brainstorming, but <clears throat> it's going to be something. We can wait. I want to open the questions to all these people who are waiting for their chances to ask you questions. How do we do it? Raise hands and we actually. Yes, and um, does anyone, hopefully, yes, there's, I'm just wondering, could you wait for the microphone, please? With, with your vast uh, body of work, I have two questions. How do you organize it? You've done so much. And then the second question, uh, as most people here are probably artists, do you, did you ever work on something that as much as you worked on it, it just didn't seem to work? And did you ever come back to that with more maturity and find something very, very special? How do I organize? Very bad at the planning. <laughs> <laughs> really, um, I can easily forget about the um, you know, schedule of tomorrow, next day. Um, especially uh, when I have a uh, very enjoyable time by drinking or chatting more. <laughs> 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 so I don't know. I just do everything um, simultaneously. Uh, so many different things at the same time. Like, a, hmm, like for example, today I I was learning Korean, and Chinese, and French in the morning. Then, um, well, just very. I'm not stupidly. Well, stupidly a beginner of those. Don't misunderstand. I can't speak them. <coughs> but uh, 
Uh, then I started watching the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> then after that, um, I, I wrote some notes, some music. Then I was, um, I was on in the outside on my little backyard, just hearing the sound of nature. And it came here. So I'm, I, I'm not organizing <laughs> anything <laughs> so but he, bad. But he also asked, how do you know when a work is success or not successful? It's very hard to tell, hard to judge what, what, uh, what's good, what's bad. Um, it's not by the amount of uh, uh, how much uh, you take time, how much time you take. Uh, for example, uh, for writing the theme of Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence, I, I don't even remember the time, I mean the moment. Uh, when, I, when I was aware, it's there in front of my eyes on the uh, music stand of the piano. So I, I, I don't remember anything. <laughs> so it's maybe flash of time, like uh, 30 seconds. <sighs> the bad music is always uh, made by, made intellectually. Like we're using, you know, the existing theories or forms or what, you know. It, it's not good <laughs> for, for me. I mean, it's not o only for me, right? in my case. Next question. Mm. We have, uh, this just Thank you, and uh, I hope this finds you in good health. But I have a question about um, your co-star from uh, 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 Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence, and your fellow New Yorker, uh, David Bowie. Um, as someone who has struggled and faced the challenge of cancer, um, do you find any inspiration in the, um, the fact that uh, we all learned uh, David Bowie had cancer late in life, but also took his final um, time on this planet to create a, a very powerful uh, body of work. Um, are you inspired by that at all? Uh, yes, very much. <clears throat> I was inspired. I, I really loved his last album. And uh, it was like a released two, two or three days before he passed by. So I, when I heard first time that album, I I thought the voice, his voice was so energetic, again, because um, yeah, I didn't feel that for the previous album, his previous album, but on for that album, the last one, you know, I I felt so much energy from his voice, so. Uh, and then two days later, you know, the news came, and I couldn't, of course, I couldn't believe it. Uh, and many people, I had many people said that the, the, that album, last album, was his will. But uh, the, the music didn't sound like a will. No, I'm sure. I'm very sure he wanted to live more. Uh, he wanted to make more music in the future. So, yeah, it's a big loss. Yeah, and um, no, he, around the same time, uh, we both had cancer. And he passed and I survived. So that's, that's another reason I, I felt I was, I was reborn. Uh, another life was given to me. I really feel that. So, uh, sorry, there, there's 
a, the microphone is where? Oh, I, there's so many hands. I have to have democracy. <laughs> Professor Sakamoto, uh, thank you very much for appointing me. Let me ask a question in Japanese. In Japanese, okay. Well, Sorry, I'm sorry. 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 I'm あの今野清志郎さんが泉谷伸弥さんと仲たがいする、まあ、原因として、まあ、あの実はあ,のあるトラブルというか口論だったということを泉谷さんがあるテレビ番組でおっしゃっていたでそれはどういうことかというとあの最近の清志郎は政治的になりすぎて政治,に政治的な音楽を歌うことによって何て言うんですか政治にすり寄りすぎてるんではないか,か要するにで若い時のようなこの雨上がりの夜空にとかあのジュキーもうシンプルクエッション<笑> The very short question <笑> What's the point? <笑>あえー、あ<笑> It's okay in Japanese <笑> But it should be short please simple なんですか<笑>アーティスティックなシン,シンガーとかミュージシャンですね Uh, when they grow up and, uh, and, and uh, uh, all grew, grew up older and older, uh, he, their music becomes so politically um, identically. Ah, um, what do you think about this? <laughs> so, the year of 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 You are saying generally、uh, the musicians yes, yes. or artists are getting older, you know, their musical arts are getting more political. More social. political, yes. Generally,、yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> there are many, so many older musicians and artists who are not political. Seems like that's more of a statement than a question, I think. I, It's a very sad piece of music that also feels hopeful. And、uh, looking at the news right now in the world, with、uh, politically, socially, and economically, in my lifetime, things are the worst they've ever been. And of course, you grew up during the Cold War and everything that's come after that. Do you ever find it hard? To look at the world as it is today and feel optimistic? I cannot be very optimistic about the present and the future.、Um, today, <coughs> it's like, um, um, okay. how many degrees today? Today, it was like a Uh, 85 degrees to here. It was so hot, right? <laughs> yeah. I was so sweaty when I came here. <clears throat> um, today,、uh, five people passed in Japan because of the heat. And over there, it was 20 degrees Fahrenheit, hotter than here.、Uh, so <laughs> We are, I think we are facing, we are looking at, we are witnessing the global warming,、um, which is happening much faster pace than it was predicted. And、um, you know, 20 degrees 
hotter than here. I, I, I don't think I can survive of uh, the global warming. So maybe I'll have to say goodbye to this world. <laughs> I mean, it's so sad, but, <laughs> but it's not the political, but um, it's um, definitely, uh, well, not definitely, but maybe uh, caused by our human activities. Um, there are many evidence, the evidences of, about that. Of course, you know, there are other people you know, who don't believe that, but I know, I know that. But anyway, politically, socially, um, and also economically, like um, you know, the differences of uh, classes, economical classes, um, divide. It's getting so wider and wider and wider every year. I, but I'm lucky I'm not a politician <laughs> because I don't know how to solve it, right? But are you optimistic? And um, the really the next day, the American, uh, current American president was elected. Um, some, my, some of my friends, American female artist, came to my office and she was literally crying. So I said, I said to myself and to her, well, we need art and music more than ever, the time like this. And I strongly believe that. But uh, I don't have uh, the answer for political or social issues. <laughs> it's too much for me. Some, there are some hands over there. Can you please give? Hi, Mr. Sakamoto. Um, I have to ask this question because I may not be able to see you again uh, in the sense that you know there might not be another opportunity. Um, something in your latest album, Async, uh, that was very striking for me was um, how much there is a, a sense of transience. As your career has uh, developed over the years, and as a listener and a witness to that, um, I feel like more and more you're returning to the sonic aspect of music uh, by your, you know, collecting sound and um, making music with that. But in the film, it, it really struck me when you said that you're trying to look for an internal sound. That's really strange for me because the physical, when we talk about physics, sound by definition fades. Right? That doesn't mean that melodies won't stuck in our head. But I'm, I'm just, it's a, it's a question, it's a puzzle for me. Why, why are you looking for eternal sound? And what does that eternal sound mean to you? It's a very hard question. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, simply because uh, the piano is, has been my, my instrument um, for a long time, since I was like, very little. Um, as you know, the, the sound of the piano decays. Decays into, it goes into silence or to the, the sound of the environment. And it's always you know, like that. So that's why, since I was uh, a teen, you know, uh, I always um, envy, I, I envied uh, like the sound of the guitar or cello or violin, because it, it doesn't, the sound of those instruments doesn't decay like the piano. Uh, it, it sustains. If uh, we can use an electric ball, uh, it, it sustains eternally, as, as long as uh, the player lives alive. <laughs> uh, 
Um, to me, um, the decaying sound, like a piano sound, symbolizes life, our lives, life. Because, uh, you know, we are born and live and die. That's a that's, um, law of life. Probably that's why uh, I envy some kind of eternal sound. Uh, you know, immortality. And that's very simple to me. Because uh, we are all uh, we all have mortali uh, mortality, so that's why uh, our consciousness seeks seek for eternity, Im immortality. That, that, does that tell <laughs> something to you? Someone who um, perceives a divide between uh, ideals in humanity and, and in nature, um, how you're inspired by Bach praying over every note, and that structure, but also inspired by the tsunami piano returning to nature. What do you expect that your finished products will do for your audience? Is it supposed to be more of a celebration of structure or? There's no, um, you know, a must be reception of this film or, or my music. You, know, uh, <coughs> you, you, you're uh, paying attention about the duality. That's that's great, um, but I'm not um, I'm not giving you any answer or anything. I'm I'm just giving you what I've thought in this film and um, I don't know how to how to receive is completely uh, it's up to you um, individually um, like uh, that's related to the uh, one of the answers that Shirin gave uh, about how to get the balance between you know organic or <laughs> Uh, the sound of nature and the uh, more artificial sound. And I, I, I answer, there is no answer. Um, I'm always looking for a good balance for me at this very moment, but uh, it, it might be different tomorrow. Uh, anyway, um, but anyway, it's uh, contradictory to me too. Um, if I Totally, um, I'm totally uh, satisfied by listening to the sound of nature. I don't have to make my own music. <laughs> There's no need. But um, at this moment, I still want to make my music. So I'm not fully satisfied by listening to the sound of nature. So that's a contradiction, yes. I, I know that. But I, sometimes the artificial, human uh, art form, music, musical art form, um, pleases me. I, I still have that pleasure. And I still have another pleasure by, uh, by the nature. And you know, it's inside myself, I'm always struggling. Or maybe uh, when I, you know, like uh, 20 years, if I 
could survive more you know, I, 20 years from now. Maybe I will not need my own music just by like a Chinese old uh, monk, like, just sitting, listening to the sound of nature. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just by you know, sipping a tea. Why not? <laughs> Hi there. Um, hi. There was a scene where you were at your computer. I think you were working on the levels of a piece of sound that you put into the composition. And you had your browser open and you had a list of the prime numbers. Can you explain if that was related to the work that you were doing, and if so, how? <laughs> it's uh, my secret method. <laughs> oh, there's a woman sitting back there. <laughs> yes, she's been waiting for a long time uh, over there inside, overlooked. Just have more woman. <laughs> Hi. Good night. Good night. Um, from the movie, I just want to ask you uh, three short questions. The first one is, did you ever have a conversation with Ennio Morricone? And what was your favorite part? And the last one, very short, is, do you feel, is, is there any place that you feel your heart belongs to? Uh, <clears throat> talking about Ennio. <clears throat> I heard many episodes um, <clears throat> about Ennio by Betolucci, but uh, I haven't, I never met Ennio. Um, last year or year before, um, he received the, uh, the honorary uh, prize at the, the Academy. So I, I sent big flowers to him. Um, I was because I wasn't there, and uh, and he I I received a message from him. You know he was so pleased uh, for receiving flowers from me because I heard uh, Ennio called Bertolucci almost every day when we were working on the Last Emperor. <laughs> Because uh, you know he he worked to get Bertolucci for for five films before, and uh, it, it was it was a big film for Bertolucci. So you know, Ennio naturally wanted to work on that. And then all of a sudden, very young Far East Japanese guy came and <laughs> took over. <laughs> I mean, r I really respect him. Um, <sighs> He does so many things, as I do. Um, he has he has written very serious contemporary music too, the, but um, macaroni Western music too, and the, but both both maybe macaroni music has much stronger aura to me. Like that's that's incredible. Very strong music, but he, he but he really can write, you know, um, like um, almost like uh, between Ligeti and Bartok, that kind of style. Really good stuff. Um, so I really admire and respect him. <coughs> and uh, is there any place my heart be belongs to? Well, since I was a child, I, I really wanted to live anywhere on this planet. I wanted to be a person who could survive or who could live anywhere on this planet, like a 
Antarctica or Africa, Asia, anywhere. Uh, I wanted to be tough like that. Um, so this planet is my, my place, my home. We have time for one last question. I suggest uh, we take the gentleman in the middle and fortunately time. Hello. Um, I just wanted to ask about your process of um, making a film scores um, and how you, like what your interaction is with sort of what is being asked of you by the director or just, and sort of how you intuitively um, feel, or I guess just, or just how you understand like what you sort of want with it and how you put your own personal, I guess, touches to it while also kind of, I guess as you were kind of saying in the film, like appeasing someone else's vision. And I guess I'm just on the side as well. Uh, do you have a favorite film? That he worked on or you mean in general? In general. Um, <clears throat> well, almost all uh, film directors don't have a language of music. So it's very hard to yeah, um, <laughs> give the exact music that they, they want to have to the composers. <coughs> um, so in many cases, uh, instead of uh, you know, the verbal communication, they put the temporary music with, with the images. So here is Bartok, here is Ligeti, here is Jazz, here is whatever, uh, here is Hans Zimmer. <coughs> and they use this kind of a temporary music for editing for like a three months, six months, eight months, and then those pieces of music you know, stick into the editor and director. And at the end, they don't want to change it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, that's a big part of a struggle. I, I, always, I always have. Did you have to ask that question? <laughs> <laughs> you, you chose him. <laughs> So, um, so in many cases, because you know they, they pick up the the music, but the temp music uh, by you know just by from the net or, or CDs, and um, you know in many cases they are like a, the uh, classical pieces of music, like a very re well recorded Bartok, Bartok's uh, concert for orchestra or something like that or maybe the very famous piece by Tchaikovsky. Then film composers fight with those existing music. Now we have to beat them. And it's almost impossible <laughs> because the quality and recording and the performance, you know, they, they're, they're great. I mean, it's very hard to compete with the classical or well recorded, well performance music, right? So, can you imagine how hard the film composers are? <laughs> and my favorite film? Oh, it's a hard question. can be different tomorrow, <laughs> that, that's me. But uh, at this moment, you know, the, the something comes up to my mind is Tokyo Story by Ozu. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you. I 
think we have to end it on this note. Uh, thank you, Richard.